Hi, my name is Mr. Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. Now for years, I've been reading and hearing within the EdTech community about how AI is gonna transform education. Now I've seen some interesting applications from artificial intelligent assessments to live translators and voice changes, but I couldn't really understand how it could fundamentally change what we do. That was until about a month ago when I saw something that's gonna change education forever. Now, over the last month, my feeds have been absolutely jam-packed full of stuff about OpenAI, and specifically a tool that they launched in December 2022 called ChatGPT. But it might be useful to give you a little bit of context first. So OpenAI actually started in about 2015 by, yep, you guessed it, Elon Musk. And originally they started as a non-profit, freely collaborative research company to promote and develop AI in a way that benefits humanity as a whole. Uh, in 2018, Musk left. Uh, he had a conflict of interest with some AI stuff he was doing with Tesla. And the company in 2019 transitioned uh, from a no-profit to a for-profit company. They have a projected revenue of 200 million for 2023 and 1 billion revenue for 2024. And they really sort of hit the headlines first about six months ago when uh, they launched a tool called DALI 2. Uh, they'd already released DALI, but it hadn't quite, quite sort of made it out into mainstream really. And, but DALI 2 really caught a lot of people's attention. Now, this is uh, an example of what we call generative AI. And this is really where AI becomes really exciting, when it is generative, when it creates new content that doesn't, didn't exist before. Now, what DALI 2 can do is generate believable images in any style you want from simple or more complex sentences. Just a few words can generate a new image that's never been seen before. So, for example, here are some images of an astronaut riding a horse in a photographic style. That's the text input that was given and look at what it's made. Now these aren't sort of photoshopped, copied and pasted, or anything like that. These have been created from scratch by DALI too. What about an astronaut lounging in a tropical resort in space in a photorealistic style? What about changing it to pixel art? It can even add in extra elements to existing photos and match the style. So here we've got the corgi added in at the background and in the foreground in a photorealistic style. What about extending famous pieces of art, like giving the Mona Lisa a body or the girl with the pearl earring, a full room. So that was pretty exciting and quite interesting. Uh, and it created a lot of media to do with the idea of, you know, would this be the end of, of, of creatives in, in the art industry and um, companies like Shutterstock who sell images and photographs, how would it impact all of that? So Dali 2, quite cool. Well, what about ChatGPT? Why is everyone going mad about ChatGPT? Well, what it is, is it's a large language model. That means it's basically read and understood and um, kind of collated the entire internet, everything that's ever been published on the internet. Well, everything before 2021, because it doesn't, it's not including material after that. But this data has been collected and sorted and organized. And then it's been augmented with this lovely, simple chat interface, like a chatbot. So you can ask questions of ChatGPT, and it will then create, generate uh, original content using the, all the information that it's read and interpreted and stored and coded before. So you can give it some prompts and it will generate something new for you. Now, because of the way that it has studied language, it can mimic human language incredibly well. It's very, very convincing. You can get it to do all sorts of things like write an original story or a poem or a screenplay, or write a covering letter for a particular job that you're applying for, rephrase a text or change the style of a text or translate a text. What about actual code? Will it actually translate computer code and check computer code, check it for bugs? You could get it to write things like policies or jokes or solve math problems or write a song. Really, the limits of ChatGPT are the limits of your own imagination. 
So the first thing to do is to get signed up with ChatGPT. Just go to the address here and click on Try ChatGPT and sign up for an account. And once you've got an account, this is what it looks like. It's very simple. You just type in a prompt here. So if I want to get started and I try something really simple, I'm just going to say, write me. Okay, and once you type in your prompt, it starts writing for you. There we go, it saves your chat up here in your save chats log. And because it's a chat bot, you could then ask it a further prompt, a follow up prompt. Um, so maybe you might want it to add in another character or write it in a slightly different style um, or translate it in a different language. You can do that next. Now, let's think about examples in education. What about history? Maybe on the trenches in World War One. Let's see what it can do with that. Okay, so there we go. Really convincing uh, essay. And if I asked it to regenerate the response, it would write something completely fresh this time round. Now this is a nice example. Here is some text which is taken from the life of Pi that was provided in the AQA English language paper. And there was then a question uh, that the students in the paper had to answer. Let's see how ChatGPT can do with this. So as you can see, it's written a really good answer to that exam question based on the text which I've already provided for it originally. Okay, so that's quite impressive. How about I provide it with the mark scheme now and then it marks its own work and gives feedback on itself. Let's try that. Now, if you're thinking it can only cope with writing essays and text-based subjects, well, here's a problem from an A-level physics paper, an OCR A-level physics paper. Let's plug this in and see what it does. So right about now, you're probably panicking, thinking that every piece of homework that ever gets submitted to you from now on will have been created with ChatGPT. Yes, students know about this. Yes, we need to be aware of it. but. It seems that OpenAI don't want it to be used for this purpose and they are looking at implementing some watermarking uh, tools so that it will be discoverable. At the moment, if you put any of the, those answers into a normal plagiarism checker, it won't come back uh, with any results because it isn't plagiarized. It's new content that's just been written for the first time by this artificial intelligence. So we're hoping that OpenAI can implement some kind of watermarking into the text that's generated that could be picked up uh, to show that it is something that's been created by artificial intelligence. In the meantime, there are lots of people out there who know this is a problem and they are writing uh, tools to be able to try and detect uh, this kind of AI uh, generated content. So in the meantime, if you can't beat them, join them. Why not use ChatGPT to help you as a teacher? You could get it to plan some lessons. Uh, it can plan a series of lessons, it can generate lists of equipment, it can generate key vocabulary okay, for those lessons. What about generate some questions, feed it a chapter of a textbook and ask it to create questions based on that chapter of a textbook or just create, you know, fill in the gaps questions, multiple choice questions uh, on a particular topic of your choice. Why not get it to write a model answer and then explain how to write a model answer like that. So you create a set of prompts for a student to use. So it could be really helpful. What about getting it to generate tasks um, that are linked with your objectives for your lesson? What about uh, active learning tasks or practical tasks that you can get the students to do based on your topics? There's so many ideas that you can use ChatGPT for to help you as a teacher. Okay, here's a teaching example. I've said, plan me a lesson on the kidney for year 10 students include some practical work, an active learning task, and 10 multiple choice questions. And just look what it's managed to do. It's put objectives down. It's told me the materials I'm gonna to need to get to do the task. I've got introduction, practical activity, active learning, assessment, conclusion. 
It didn't give me the questions first time, so it said, please provide me with the multiple choice questions. And here they are, okay, uh, including the answers. Okay, so this is pretty cool. You need to log on, you need to have a go, you need to see what it looks like, you need to start thinking about how this is gonna impact your students, how it's gonna impact your teaching. But what's coming next? Because these things don't hang around. Well, the next thing probably is for integration. Okay, we're gonna see ChatGPT popping up, uh, integrated into lots of tools. Microsoft have pledged to invest a huge amount of money. They've already invested quite a lot of money in OpenAI and they're gonna invest more. And we're gonna start seeing Jack chat GPT uh, cropping up in Microsoft tools like Outlook or PowerPoint or Word. Uh, we're gonna see it integrated with YouTube and WhatsApp. We're gonna see it integrated into pretty much all that we do on the internet at some point. And the current system that chat GPT is based on is called GTP3, uh, which has, as you can see, 175 uh, billion parameters that it uh, kind of works around, but they're already developing chat uh, GPT-4 and you can see just how much more significant that is. They reckon that's going to be based on one trillion parameters. So this intelligence is just getting more and more intelligent. So what can we take home from the sort of first month of this? Well first of all this is massively fast moving. Uh, Chat GPT got a million users in about five days or something. That's how big this has got. Okay, yes, we've got some short-term issues regarding plagiarism that we need to be really careful of and mindful of, and we need to be trying to educate our students that taking shortcuts uh, like this isn't gonna be helpful, especially when they've got assessments where they won't have this opportunity to use this kind of tool. So they're gonna get caught out. So they need to be wary of the pros and cons of using this type of technology. Fundamentally, this is the most disruptive technology released for a very long time. This is gonna change what we do and how we do it. So if you haven't used it yet, get online, sign up, play around with it, see what it can do and think about how you can use it to help you in what you do as an educator.